before hits like Beat Mania, Dance Dance Revolution, and Guitar Hero existed, there was one game that started it all. You gotta do what? I gotta believe! Parappa the Rapper. That is not to say that this was the first game to employ music or rhythm-based gameplay elements. However, it was the first game to not only properly establish some of the core principles of the genre, but also bring rhythm games to the mainstream. But before we talk about the game's legacy and influence, we need to go back to the 90s. Masaya Matsuro was a Japanese musician, playing in a band called Size, as well as composing for commercial ads. As personal computers became more popular, Matsura became interested in using them to create music, which eventually led him into making interactive games. In 1993, he released The Seven Colors, Legend of Psy City, a point-and-click game for the Macintosh based on the band's music. Soon after this, Matsura left Size to pursue his ventures in music games and founded the company Nana Onsha. The company was quickly taken on by Sony into their internal division called Division Zero. While much of PlayStation's early game development was focused on more popular ideas like FPS and racing games, Division Zero had complete creative freedom, which is what allowed Parappa the Rapper to be made. Because Matsuro was so interested in the practice of vocal sampling, he decided to make a game centered around rap. Matsuro would write the lyrics in Japanese, while Ryu Watabe would translate them into English while freestyling. Along with the artistic direction of Rodney Greenblatt and the story writing of Gabony Toe, Parappa the Rapper took form. The game was released in Japan in 1996, and then worldwide in 1997. Because there was nothing like it before, the team found it hard to promote. Not only did they not know what genre to label it as, but many members of the team were even unsure if it qualified as a game at all. Regardless, it sold very well and was met with good reviews. It was praised for its unique art style, memorable characters and music, charming story, and revolutionary gameplay. It also spawned a decent amount of merchandise, which cemented Parappa as an early mascot for PlayStation. However, it was criticized for its extremely short length. With only six levels, 100% completing the game usually only takes about two hours. The game stars Parappa, which is actually a play on words, roughly translating to the Japanese term for paper thin, an obvious reference to the character's two-dimensional form. The story follows him as he attempts to win the heart of Sunny Funny, and all of the antics that ensue. Through his relatively nonsensical journey, he learns many new things by rapping along with his different teachers. This is where the real meat of the gameplay exists. Each level is separated out into progressing stages. The level's teacher will wrap a bar while a line of symbols corresponding to buttons on the controller appears at the top. The player then has to rap by repeating the pattern back and hitting the buttons in time with the music. This call and response system is often compared to that of Simon. Other games after this would also use this gameplay style. Depending on how well you rap, the game will say whether or not you performed each bar correctly, indicated by either a positive or negative sound effect at the end. The game operates on a ranking system, going from good to bad to awful. Continued poor play will result in your rank decreasing, as well as the background and character animations changing and the song becoming noticeably worse. On the other hand, continued good play will result in your rank increasing, as well as some points added to your score, a relatively arbitrary aspect of the game. To finish a level, you need to keep your rank from ever going below awful, and end the song with a good ranking. Once you finish the game, you have the ability to go back to each level and try for the cool rank, something that is displayed to you on your first playthrough, but is impossible to achieve at that time. Cool rank requires the player to go above and beyond by not only still wrapping the bars correctly, but also filling in the spaces by freestyling. While this concept sounds amazing as endgame replay value, in practice, it is a little messy due to the fact that the player usually does not know which buttons correspond to which words, making the freestyles sound mostly unintelligible. 
It's ironic since Matsura is fully aware that most people play the game this way, but he states that a large intention for Parappa the Rapper was this focus on expressing yourself outside the bounds of the game's restrictions. Once cool rank has been achieved, you will enter cool mode, wherein the teacher will actually leave the stage, forcing the player to go completely solo. It's not exactly clear as to what the game considers a good freestyle, and it's once again very hard to create something that sounds halfway decent. But as demonstrated here by the game's creator himself, it is possible to sound good. Did you check the toilet on the right, right, right? Did you check the toilet on the left, left, left? However, the game's biggest flaw is how rough the timing window is. Often, your raps will sound perfect, but the game will say you played it wrong. Whereas other times, your raps will sound off, but the game will say you played it correctly. Playing the game on newer TVs may have an effect on this input lag, but the use of a CRT TV does not completely fix this issue. Aside from the pure gameplay, the music is fantastic. Each song properly sets the tone for whatever Parappa is trying to learn at the time, ranging from straight hip-hop to even jazz and reggae styles. And while the lyrics are at times questionable, I've been working here since my mama was a baby. the raps usually have a pretty good flow. My style is rich, dope, fat, and rich. We'll make a cake today that looks rich. It's hard to play this game without constantly tapping your foot. Other than all of that, there really isn't too much else to say about the game itself. After a cool ranking has been achieved on all the songs, one more level is unlocked. However, in reality, it's simply a looping animation of Sunny Funny and Katie Cat dancing in front of a crowd. The only thing you can actually do here is change their outfits and move the camera. A pretty lackluster completion bonus to say the least. After the success of Parappa the Rapper, the series continued with a spin-off titled Um Jammer Lammy. After that, there was a direct sequel for the PlayStation 2, then a port of the original for the PSP, and finally, a remaster of the original for the PlayStation 4. Parappa also made an appearance as a playable character in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, and even got two different anime series. Sony also included him as a cameo in the PlayStation 5's Astro's Playroom. In 2016, Sony announced that they were working on a mobile Parappa the Rapper game, but no further details have been released since then. In terms of a real sequel, there was a Kickstarter created by Matsura for a spiritual successor called Project Rap Rabbit, but the campaign fell extremely short of its goal. Nonetheless, the game not only spawned the modern rhythm game genre we know and love today, but also remained as a cult classic that has appeared a couple times in mainstream media. Kick, punch, kick, punch, block, turn around, kick, block, block, kick, kick, punch, 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 block, turn around. Parappa the Rapper's legacy cannot be overstated. Who's to say that we would have ever seen games like Beat Mania if not for it? By far, the most inspiring part of the game's history is how it all started for Matsura. His main goal was always to bring people closer to music, and most importantly, he wanted to make a game that was more about having fun and self-accomplishment than anything. People always have kind of a wall between music and life. I'm a musician, so I don't feel any um, wall between music and me. So I want to erase this kind of wall. So if people can perform without thinking about the music, maybe it's happy and fun. Both of these principles are the cornerstones of rhythm games, and respect has to be given to Matsura for his perseverance into a genre he had yet to create. You still like to enjoy the game? Yeah. <laughs>